Hey friends, it's Len here at 1A Auto. Today I'm working on a 2007 Toyota FJ Cruiser. I'm going to be replacing some axle seals. It's going to be a very easy job and I want to be the one that shows you how to do it. If you need these or any other parts, you can always check us out at 1AAuto.com. Okay, so what we're going to do first is we're going to take off these six lug nuts, 21 millimeter. You can use a ratchet and a socket if you want, or your air gun. There we are. Get the wheel broken free. Drop this down, wheel it out of the way. Okay, so now we're just gonna try to push back the caliper a little bit. I'm just gonna go like this. Just try to push back these pistons best I can. This is just to release the pads from the rotor. Cool, okay. The rotor can move around freely. If we need to, we can push them back a little further in a minute. Now we're gonna remove the caliper. One of the first things we need to do is take off this clip right here. Generally cutters work pretty good for this to grab onto it. Let me grab some in a second here. Here we are. Now this line can move around. It's very important, so when you take your caliper off, it can move around a little bit. I'm gonna use a 12 millimeter up here on this bolt. That's going to remove this bracket so it can move around. Get my socket off of there. There we are. Okay, the bracket can move around freely. I'm going to take these off right here. If it's easier and you wanted to, you could take off the outer tie rod end. Um, I'm probably going to do that. That way there I can turn this and I can get to those bolts easier. Just grab some cutters. There we are. Just wiggle this around. If you have a new... Uh, cotter pin. You don't have to worry about saving this one, but if you don't, you're going to have to try to save it. We do have new ones, so I'm not super worried about it. This one doesn't look like it's coming out, so I'm just going to cut that off of there. Tie rod end nut is a 19 millimeter. There we are, took that off of there, 19 millimeter. It's gonna give the knuckle a couple bonks. I wanna be careful not to damage the threads on the tie rod or hit the boot. It's super important you don't break your boot open. If you do, you'll have to replace the outer tie rod end. All right, around this way. There we are. Now when we go to install this, we're going to have to make sure that we get that cotter pin out of there. Okay? So we want to put a new one in there. We'll set this aside. Now we can pivot this and we can do what we need to do. We're going to use a 17 millimeter to remove the uh, two bolts for the caliper to the knuckle. Same thing to the other one. At this point, the caliper may come down. You want to make sure you hold on to it so it doesn't fall down and hang too far. Bolt number two, it's the same as the first. Set it aside with the other one. Now I want to hang the caliper, um, not by its flex hose, obviously. So just grab a, whatever you've got, coat hanger or something that everybody would have. There you are. We can remove our front rotor. Okay, so now we're gonna take off this cover right here. It's just a tin cover. So you don't want to completely destroy it. <clears throat> Along the hub and the, um, the cap itself, there's a little lip. There's kind of like a little uh, gap. Hopefully you can try to get a pry bar or a screwdriver or whatever you've got in there. You just kind of want to get in between, break it free. If this bends a little bit, that's okay because you can just bend it back if you have uh, you know, pliers or anything like that. Like I said, you just don't want to damage it too bad because it needs to create a good seal. Okay. Let's see if I can get something else in there. Looks like we're pretty close.
get this here. There's our cover. It's not too damaged. I can try to straighten that out a little bit. When I go to reinstall this, I'm just gonna use a little bit of RTV or gasket maker. Uh, it's just gonna help keep moisture out of here and protect this nut area. I'll set the cap aside. We're gonna remove this cotter pin. I'm gonna use my cutters. Once again, if you have a new cotter pin, you can go ahead and cut it. If you don't, you need to try to save it because you do need to have the cotter pin in there. I have access to new cotter pins, so I'm gonna cut this. Just watch your eyes. It's a little locking thing. Okay, just slides over the nut there. And then you line up the slots with the hole and put your cotter pin through. It makes it so this nut can't loosen up when you're driving down the road. Not that it should, you're gonna have it torqued down anyway. It's just precautionary. We'll set this aside because we're gonna reuse it. Now we're gonna take off this nut. So I'm gonna grab the socket we need and we'll move along. We're gonna take off this nut right here, 36 millimeter. It's easiest with an air gun. Uh, if you don't have access to an air gun, what you're gonna wanna do so you're gonna grab a bar, you're gonna bring the vehicle closer to the ground and set this up against your lug studs, just like this pretty much. So when you go to loosen up this nut, your, um, your hub won't be able to turn, okay? And you can use your 36 with a long ratchet, break it free, it'll come loose. With an air gun, you don't need to worry about that. Just hold this, easy peasy. Okay, now you wanna try to push your axle in. This one feels like it moves a little bit. So we know we're in good shape on that. I'm gonna go with a little bit of penetrant here. Let it do its job. It's gonna hang out in there. Oh yeah. So that's moving freely. We're yeah. gonna take off this outer tie right end nut. Bonk that out of there. Now we can turn this. Next what we wanna do is we wanna uh, disconnect the ABS wire from the sensor itself. We're going to take it off of here, here. We'll get it off of here just so it's out of the way. All right. And we'll try to just move the ABS wire out of the way so we don't put any tugs on this. Because what we're going to need to do optimally is remove this knuckle so we can get the axle out of here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to try to get my pocket screwdriver in here, right like this. See if I can get that to do its thing. When I, when I go in between right here where this white dot is, there's a little nub, like a squeezy nub. You can't grab with your thumb, obviously, because it's in there. So you need to use something small like this. Wedge it in, give it just a little pry, and it lifts up on that little lock right there. Okay? When that lifts away, you can just grab this, wiggle it, disconnect your ABS wire, you always take a peek, make sure there's no funny colors in there. No reds, greens, blues, rust, dirt, water. That looks really great. We can move along. We'll start disconnecting these clips. Just use your pocket screwdriver still. Stick it in there. Should lift right up. Okay, do the same thing to the other one right along the edge, lifts right up. Okay, this one doesn't look like we have to do anything with it because it's very far out of the way. So I'm really not worried about that. Now when we can, now when we try to take the knuckle off of here, we don't have to worry about the ABS wire getting a tug and or breaking because last thing you wanna do is break your ABS wire or your ABS sensor. It's gonna cost you a couple more bucks and who needs to spend more money? Let's do it right. That's out of the way, we're safe with that. We can move on to the next step. We're gonna take off this sway bar link right here, okay? To do that, we're gonna hold right along here. You can use some locking pliers if you want, or you can find the wrench that fits along it. Then you're gonna take off this nut right here. We'll grab the tools and I'll show you how. So now I'm gonna take off the sway bar link. This is a 1A auto sway bar link. I'm gonna use a 24 millimeter on the link side and an 18 millimeter for the nut side. 
Remove that nut. We'll set this aside. I'm just gonna get this link out of here. Grab my pry bar. Okay. We're cruising. This cotter pin right here is gonna have to come out. It's kind of a funny cotter pin though. On the back side that curls around. So right here, normally you'd have two straight uh, pins that go straight through this. This one has one that goes through it and then the other one goes around the outside and it curves like this. So you wanna grab that leg, pull it out and away. Bring it down. Then you should be able to uh, walk this out of here. If you can't, with the small screwdriver, just grab some cutters, um, you know, and then pull it out. So that's what it looks like. Just like I mentioned, it was through like this, and there's a little hooky do. Goes around the backside there. We're gonna remove this nut, and then we're gonna put it back on a few threads, and we're gonna give the knuckle a couple bonks and try to break it free from the upper control arm. I'm gonna use my 19 millimeter to remove this nut. Safety glasses, of course. Here we are. I'll take it off just so I can show you, but then I'm gonna put it back on, like I said, a few threads. Because now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bonk right here on the knuckle. I'm gonna be careful for my boot. I don't wanna damage my boot. I'm just gonna hit right here, okay? Once this breaks free, it's gonna to wanna to drop down. That's the purpose for the nut being on there. If you don't have that and you just let this drop down, it can swing down and hit you in the face. So safety first, it's the number one concern here at 1A Auto. I'm just gonna go ahead and hit right here. It broke free, okay? Pull down on it like that if you want. I'm gonna slowly bring this down so it can't hit me in the face. There we are. Cool. So this is pretty much ready to come out at this point, okay? We just have two more bolts down at the bottom here that we're gonna remove. One here and one here. Once we do that, the knuckle is gonna be ready to separate from this bracket right here. We can draw it right out and then we'll take off the axle. So here we go. I'm gonna use a 19 millimeter socket. That's what the bolt looks like, okay? Set that aside. I'm gonna hold the knuckle at this point. Bolt number two, the exact same as the first. Now the knuckle is gonna pull straight off, just like this. And we've, re we've removed our left front knuckle. So now I'm gonna use something as simple as a small bungee cord here. And I'm just gonna go around the axle and the, um, the strut. And that's just for safety's sake, because what I'm gonna do next is remove this axle and I'll be doing that if I can get this thing on there there we go and I'll be doing that by trying to drive the axle out of the front differential once it breaks free it has the possibility of coming off hitting the ground I'm gonna be under there so I don't want to get hurt so I'm just gonna put that under there and we're gonna go ahead and remove this axle now I'm gonna use a large pry bar I'm gonna try to grab on this lip and I'm gonna try to pry the axle out when the axle comes out, it's gonna go in this direction. Let's see if I can get over here. Doesn't feel like it wants to go there either. Okay. So the axle isn't coming out that way, which is common. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. It doesn't hurt to give it a try. Now I'm just gonna come underneath it like this and I'm gonna give my bar a couple bonks and see if I can drive this out. Okay, looks like it's starting to come out a little bit. So we're going in the right direction. Get this up in there. If you wanted to, you could try to take down your skid plate. 
Get a little bit of gear oil. As you remove this, there's gonna be fluid that comes out from around the seal and the axle. It's gonna come down. You wanna make sure it goes into your collection bucket. Now I'm just gonna pull the axle out of here, or pry it, depends on what we need to do. There we are. So now we're gonna take off our bungee cord, or whatever you use to tie up your axle. Or maybe you didn't even use anything, that's up to you, it's your prerogative. I'm gonna pull the axle out through here. Now we've removed our left front axle. Easy peasy. Okay, so here we go. This right here is the seal. Goes on the back side of the bearing, keeps moisture out of there. Protect the bearing so it can go on and on and on. I'm just gonna use a pry bar and my hammer. You can use whatever you need to, but essentially we wanna try to drive this seal up and away. There we are. We removed our seal. We'll grab our new one, we'll compare it real quick, and we'll be able to install it. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of um, silicone paste here, just along the spring. This is just gonna help prevent it from falling out when I go ahead and tap it in. There's a spring located on the back side, which is the side we're on here. And then there's one also on the front side, right in there. So we're gonna do the same thing to both sides, just a little bit. If you don't have silicone paste, you can go ahead and use something like uh, Vaseline or whatever you might have, maybe even a little bit of axle grease if you had to. Um, just basically anything to keep the spring in there. Just from the vibration of trying to put your seal in, sometimes they like to pop off. Okay, so we get that. We took our rag, go right up and along here. We can take our seal. Set it right down on there, just like that. Now what you wanna do is you wanna take a punch of some sort, and you wanna go along this lip right here, not up along here. You can try to give it a quick bonk with a hammer just to get it kind of settled in up on the edge here, but if you peen it over, you're just gonna have to straighten it out. So it's your prerogative. What I like to do is start one side in a little bit, just like that, I'm gonna give it a quick bonk. That kind of gets it started for me. Now I just go like this. I'm just gonna work my way around the whole seal here. Try to get it down all the way. Once that's down, we can move ahead to the next step. Bring it down some more here. You can hear the difference when it's sitting up high and when it's actually sitting against the knuckle. Just take a peek. Make sure it's sitting down all the way around. It is. My spring didn't pop out on the outside. It's not hanging down on the inside. I'd say we're good to go. Okay, so now we're gonna take out the axle seal out of the front differential. To do that, you can use something like a long pry bar. They also have uh, seal removal tools. You can use one of those if you have access to one. All I'm gonna do is go up against the uh, inside edge on the top there and the outside edge along the bottom with my pry bar. Apply some pressure, it's gonna pop off. Fluid's gonna come out, of course, more fluid than it already has. So we still got our bucket under there. We have our eye protection. Now I'm just gonna give this a little tug and see if it comes apart. There we are, easy peasy. That's what our seal looks like. So I'm gonna use my 12 millimeter with an extension and go right up in this hole right here. There's a bolt that goes up into the body of the vehicle. That's what it looks like. We're gonna do the same thing to the others. Watch out for dripping fluid. Gonna be the last one here. Slide 
tighten this down. Just hooked on to, there it is. There we are. We removed our shield. We'll get this out of the way. On the inside of this seal right here, there's a small spring. It just goes around. That's where the axle's gonna ride up against. Well, the axle's gonna be in here, but where we're putting the little bit of lube here is just to hold this small little spring in. Right there. Maybe a little bit where the axle's gonna ride. Why not? Okay. Now we're gonna take this and a rag. We're gonna clean up the area in the differential. So it's nice and clean. Take our seal with the rubber flappiness facing out. It's gonna kind of to get it a little started in here. I'm just gonna go kind of crook it a little bit. Just so it's started. I'm gonna take a punch. I'm just gonna try to drive this in. go until this is flush with the differential. Okay. Try with a different punch here. See if I can make it happen. Pretty good. There we are. Okay. We'll grab our axle. Okay. So now we're gonna go ahead and install our axle. Just gonna bring it over to the seal. Try to get it just past it. There we are. Shake the axle around a little bit. Okay. You might notice that it really doesn't want to go in very easy, right? That's because at the end it has a little lock clip. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hold the axle. I'm gonna give the end a bonk. I like to keep the nut on there a little bit and use a rubber mallet. And that way there, I can drive it without actually hurting any of the threads. You definitely don't wanna mess up your threads. Okay, take a look at it. Get, looks like we're getting close. There we are. Okay, just a couple light slams, <clears throat> like that. Easy peasy, broke a sweat, it's okay. All right, we can move on to the next step. All right, so we'll get our knuckle. So now we're gonna slide our axle into our knuckle, bring the knuckle over the lower ball joint bracket. Take our two bolts, try putting one in this hole. One in this hole. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this up with our 19 millimeter. Those are both tight. I'm just gonna get this sway bar link up in here. Just like that. Now when we do this, we can use a pry bar. Go right in between one of the coils and the uh, upper control arm. And we can bring it down to where we need it. So I'm gonna get my nut ready. I just need to get a few threads on it. I 
Here we are. Let's see. We'll get our swear bar link nut started here. Okay. Now we're gonna tighten these down. And we'll get the torques back in. Just gonna tighten this up. It's tight. Let me grab the torque spec for that. We're gonna tighten this down too. So we'll bottom this out with our 19. Here we are. We'll grab the torque spec, we'll torque it down. So now we're gonna to torque down the ball joint nut, 81 foot pounds with a 19 millimeter. There we are. That's torqued. Now we just want to look at it. You can see where the ball joint, um, the, the hole in the ball joint is, it needs to line up with the next slot. So at this point, we're going to need to tighten this a little bit more to get it so it lines up. Then I'm going to use my ratchet. So you can see the hole and the slot are lined up. Now we're going to replace that cotter pin, this little pin right here. Same thing we used, we removed. We're just going to slide it back over just like we did before and then pull it over the ball joint so it clips into the slots. Can't fall out. Feels nice and tight. I'm just gonna go ahead and put on the axle nut now. So I'm gonna take my bar. I'm just gonna go straight across the studs just like this. That's gonna make it so the hub can't turn while I torque this down. I'm gonna get my torque wrench and we're gonna torque this down to 173 foot-pounds with my 36 millimeter socket. So here we go, 173 foot-pounds. There we are, set it one more time. Torqued. So now it's time to put on our new um, lock. This just slides over the nut. You line up the slot with the hole, put your new cotter pin through. Then you can choose which way you want to pin it. Some people like to uh, make one of these ears go one way, one go the other. It really depends on what you want to do. It's your prerogative, I'll leave it up to you. Uh, some people will bring it up around the front. Basically, as long as you bend them over and the cotter pin can't come out on its own and then the axle nut can't unlock on its own, you're doing all right, okay? That's never gonna come off on its own. We're all set. Now we'll grab our cap. Okay, so I'm just gonna use a little bit of a gasket maker here. Just go right along the edge. There we are. We're gonna put this right into the hub, just like that. Grab my rubber mallet, give it a couple bonks. <laughs> there we are. Let's make sure it's in. Okay, no moisture is gonna get in there. Now, if you want to clean it up, go ahead and clean it up. Just go around it, do the best you can. Doesn't have to be anything too pretty. Well, it's your vehicle. Maybe you do want it to look pretty. It's gonna be hidden though, FYI. Get that out of there. Cool. I'd say that looks decent. It's getting worse the more I touch it, so I'm just gonna stop. We're just gonna plug in our ABS wire. Listen for it clip. Give it a nice little tug. Feels good. Goes right in these little plastic brackets here. I'm going to push that down one second here. I'll just get this on there. Okay. I'll just clip these in. ABS wire can't go anywhere. It's not going to get hit, uh, caught on the axle anywhere. Should be good to go. Now we'll uh, put on a little bit of copper never seize. Perfect. We'll grab our rotor and we can move along. All right, we've got our rotor. Put it right on here. I'm just gonna grab a lug nut and try to put this on as far as I can. I want this to make sure, or this is gonna help me make sure that the rotor can't move around on the hub. The more it moves around, the more chances you have of uh, rust flakes falling in between the rotor and the hub 
which will cause a brake pulsation down the line. We'll just kind of give it a little spin like this. I don't hear any brake grinding. The backing plate isn't hitting up against there. It's very common for it to happen. Maybe you were moving something around. You tweak the backing plate a little bit. This one sounds good. Carefully put it back over. Grab your mounting bolts. If you want to use a little thread locker on these, you can. It's your prerogative for the purpose of this video. I'm not going to worry about it. We're just going to turn these all the way in and then we'll torque them down. So now we're going to torque down these two bolts to 91 foot pounds using a 17 millimeter. Just going to turn that. Okay. Check them again real quick. Okay. Can set our bracket back up. Got the hole for the bolt and then the hole for the ear on the bracket. Just gonna go like this. I'm gonna turn it so there's less pressure. It's gonna come up here. A bolt like this, you definitely don't need to use thread locker on it. Might actually better to use a little bit of uh, never seize if you have access to some, but I'm not gonna worry about it for the purpose of this video. I'm gonna use my 12 millimeter, tighten this up. Take our line, try to bring it down so we can see the groove. We're going to use this clip. This is going to go through with the, um, the little flippy ear facing our thumb. So we'll just try to bring it in. Sometimes getting these in is pretty difficult. I'm just going to loosen this up again real quick a little bit. Let's get some more movement out of this. Let's just set it where we need it. As soon as I let go, it goes back. Okay, now I'm just gonna bonk that in. This is what I have in my hand, so. Small hammer would work for this. Okay, snug this back up. Tight. Okay, tight, tight. All that's tight. Okay, we've got this right here. When we took it apart, when we took it apart, we had to break the cotter pin. So I'm just gonna need to drill that out real quick. So I'll do that. Okay. So we get the hole through that. Easy peasy. Now we'll just clean it off and we can uh, tighten it down and put a brand new cotter pin in there. So now we're just gonna take the tie rod nut. We're gonna bottom it out and then we'll go ahead and torque it down using my 19 millimeter. We'll go with the assumption that it doesn't wanna tight down, tighten down, it's just spinning inside the, um, the knuckle there. Something you can do if you have access to a long pry bar, just apply uh, upward pressure careful of course for your axle wherever you need to go that you're not pressing on your axle. I'm just going to keep moving around until I find a nice safe spot. That'll be alright I guess. I'm just going to apply upward pressure. There we are. 
Now we're gonna go ahead and torque this down and then we're gonna have to bring it um, continually clockwise until we get to the closest slot that lines us up with our uh, locking point. Okay, we're gonna torque this down to 67 foot-pounds. Okay, that's torqued. Now it's important to pay attention to, like I said before, where the, um, the holes are. There's a hole right here, but it kind of lines up with the castle nut, the castle part of the castle nut. So we need to bring it a little further until it lines up. So I'm just gonna use my ratchet. Gonna go as far as I feel like I need to here. A little bit more. There we are. Slide that right through. It's your prerogative how you want to set this. Some people go side to side, one ear to one side, one ear to the other side. Some people go over the top. As long as it's bent and it can't come out on its own, you're doing all right. So you do you, boo boo. Get that on there. That cotter pin can go nowhere. There's no way that this nut's gonna be able to loosen up on its own and the tie rod won't be able to come off causing the, uh, the wheel to go out of control. So, we're tight, tight. Everything's tight coming around here. Perfect, clear to move on to the next step. Okay, so now that you've finished that service, you wanna make sure that you top off the fluid. To do that, you'd wanna take out the fill plug or the check plug. Once that's out, you can stick your gloved finger or if you have a little pick, you can put it inside and just see if you feel a little bit of fluid right there. If you don't feel any fluid, just go ahead and top it off. You're gonna use a little bit of 8090 weight, GL5. Very simple. Once it's topped off, you just wanna make sure that you uh, put the plug back in, snug it up so it's nice and tight, and off you go. Okay, so now we're gonna get the wheel up on here. I've got a couple lug nuts in my hand. I'm gonna take the wheel, put it up against my leg, and I'm gonna lift with my leg slash ab muscles, just like that. I'm gonna try not to use my back. I don't wanna hurt my back. Go like this. Lift this up. There we are. I'm holding the wheel. Get one lug nut started on there. Number two started on there. Now I can release the wheel and I can grab the rest of my lug nuts. We have all of our lug nuts on, right? We still have to snug them up. To snug them up, what we wanna do is go in a snowflake pattern on this. Generally speaking, you go crisscross, but this is more like a snowflake, so you go boom, 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 okay? Never go around in a circle. You go ahead and go around in a circle, you tighten it up along this way, pulls it in, right? You get over to this side, you think you have it tight, you might even torque it down, and uh, it's still cocked off to the side a little bit. You go ahead and hit a bump, boom. Next thing you know, your wheel's ready to fall off, okay? So just go ahead, and go crisscross, star pattern, whatever you wanna call it. I'm just gonna bottom it out, and then we're gonna torque them down after. We're gonna go ahead and torque down the wheel now to 85 foot-pounds with our 21 millimeter socket. We're gonna continue in our snowflake pattern, or crisscross, whatever you wanna call it. Start here, go to the opposite side of the wheel. There we are, we know they're all torqued. If you wanna hit them again, hit them again. Small price to pay for a little bit of safety. There we are, easy peasy. Thanks for watching. Visit 1AAuto.com for quality auto parts shipped to your door, the place for DIY auto repair. And if you enjoyed this video, please click the subscribe button.